It's 924. Thanks so much for being with us on News Channel 3 Live at 9. The new book, Black Sheep, explores what it's like to grow up biracial in America. Author Ray Studevant takes a deep look into his own struggles as that child. And this morning, he joins us live via Zoom. Ray, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it a lot. Um, your story is difficult because you write that you experienced racism from all uh, types of people, your own family, in fact, your black family and people in the white community. Explain that to us. Well, it's it was difficult because most most biracial children, you can look at them and tell that they're mixed. But what made this story unique was that I, my birth certificate said black, but if I didn't look just like my father, I'd, be, I'd pass for white. And I grew up in the blackest city in America. It was Washington, D.C., and at that time it was Chocolate City. So the memoir, it talks about the eyes through my adopted mother, who was my aunt, who you see on the cover. You know, she was right down the road. She grew up right down the 55 freeway from you guys, right outside of uh, Jackson, Mississippi. So she was a black woman who had to deal with racism from the white fo white people in the 30s and 40s, but now she was forced by tragedy to, to raise me in the blackest city in America, on the blackest side of town, and I had to deal with racism from black people. So we had that, in, and so if you look at the cover, you see racism, abandonment, belonging, and redemption, but in essence, therein lies, it, it, it's truly a love story about uh, her trying to help me to navigate through the rough waters of, of racism. Yeah. Right, and, and having at the same time to overcome her difficult mm -hmm. feelings about white people, difficult and understandable given the experiences she had. Mm -hmm. When did, were you, was she able to, as you got older, talk with you about how she felt inside, the conflict that she must have felt? Or did you find this out much later as an adult, um, were you ever able to have a really honest conversation with her and she with you? Not to the degree that I really wanted to. That was the reason why I wrote the book and you see redemption because I never really got the closure and I never thought she really got her just due because in the midst of all of those issues, she demonstrated courage mm -hmm. and, and love because she was not obligated or compelled to adopt me. I was an orphan and she was my aunt only by marriage. Right. So we had never really, we had one conversation where she told me two things. She said, she said that I know that I, cause she used to tell me, you always have the joker in the deck basically. And that you, the joker was in the, in the card game could trump everything. And she said, you play, don't ever think you can play the white card as the joker because it won't get you anywhere in this world. You might think that. So she was constantly showing me my birth certificate, reminding me that although you have blue eyes, you have straight hair, your birth certificate says you're a Negro and don't ever forget it. <laughs> you know, so yeah. she was, and we never really got the closure that I wanted because the Alzheimer's progressed and, and she began to deteriorate so fast that it's something I regretted. So I felt I owed her uh, black sheep to really let the world hear her her, 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 uh, her voice, be a voice for her. Yeah, she was clearly a remarkable woman. Um, oh, definitely. What, do you, what can we all learn? This is a somewhat, I'm assuming for many people, it's still somewhat taboo to talk about the fact that racism comes from all sides in America, really. Oftentimes when we talk about racism, we talk about racism against African Americans. But there is also reverse racism, and there I mm -hmm. there's racism within uh, a single ethnicity, whether it's white, black, because sometimes it's classism. Is, what do you hope we get from your book as a larger community? Well, I think that from, unfortunately, younger years in prison, dumb decisions, I was segregated with the Aryan Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. And mind you, imagine coming from never seeing one white person on my side of town. And later, when, you know, in my 30 years ago, I go to prison. And, and when you're segregated, but I had conversations with the most racist, apparently, whites you could imagine. Mm -hmm. But in their private moments, a lot, you know, some of the whites were just saying, man, I was mistreated by someone along the way. And I developed an inner rage. And I think also as... Um, one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, we knock on, I knock on doors 
and I would meet white people, black people, and basically black and white people folks pretty much want the same thing. Mm. They just want peace and security, peace of mind, and a fair opportunity. And I've just known so many incredible white people, so many incredible black folks that it's heartbreaking. It really is because it, it, it's just, it, it's just, it, it's just really been uh, um, an interesting life. And she told me later on, going back to your initial question, that life was going to be quite interesting for you. And I'm sorry that you have to deal with this because every room you walk into, yeah, they don't know what you are, but you know what you are. And you have to decide at what point in a conversation do you disclose that, if ever. And I remember at the other end of the spectrum, going to corporate America. You go into corporate America and you learn a lot about who you are and the, the whole class system and all of that. But again, there were people, and I would test folks, and most people that I experience in all walks and all different parts of the country were generally decent people. And I just, it just breaks your heart. I mean, like I say, to see what's going on today. But again, despite all of the issues, this was a love story because she taught me that love trumps everything. I don't care if it's racism, abandonment, belonging, whatever. And that's why the book has been aptly uh, described as, you know, the notebook meets the help because, yeah. you know, she was dealing with the Alzheimer's, didn't recognize what it was, but yeah. So that's been my experience and I, yeah. Well, thank you for using your story and the difficulties that you faced uh, to remind us all that we need to love each other as individuals and continue that love story in a different way. Thank you, Ray, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll put thank your website you. on the screen.